try to do this with my glasses off, but it's not going to work. All right. How is everybody? Good? Did every, everybody enjoyed the reception last night with Scotland? It was good? I noticed over there on the table that uh, they have fudge, but they did not bring out the whiskey today. So, yet, I'm told. So that comes later. That's probably a good thing. Um, as he mentioned, my, my name's Andrew Younger, and uh, I am the new Minister of Energy in the province of Nova Scotia. I'm very pleased to take on that role. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I've taken a long and winding path to this through working in fisheries to uh, chairing the uh, energy committee for the city of Halifax for about five years, um, then being an opposition critic and all that sort of thing. So uh, none of that really matters, as you probably know, when it comes to uh, people in politics and politicians, uh, because what matters is uh, what they ultimately get done and who they listen to and so forth. And uh, there are a number of our staff here from the Department of Energy uh, who are here today. and. They're here today both because we have a, uh, a very, uh, we believe very firmly in marine renewable energy as part of our strategy going forward, and that's why they're here today, and that's why they've been an active part of this. Uh, and they're also here to, to see what I say, because they always wonder what I'm going to say when I get up here, because uh, I keep changing things as I go. Anyways, I, I'd like to uh, thank you for the invitation to uh, be here today in the nation's capital, and I appreciate the opportunity. I think this is extremely important. I want to tell you that my commitment is extremely strong to the development of tidal energies, and, and it is, in fact, one of my top priorities. In fact, uh, within days of becoming uh, Nova Scotia's new Minister of Energy, I began reaching out to industry leaders around the world uh, and across Canada and tell them about our vision. The... Um, I told them how Nova Scotia is becoming a world leader in renewable energy and innovation. And I told them about our research capacity, our unique environmental attributes, and I explained to them how I envision us becoming the world leader in in-stream hydro, tidal turbines, and other emerging renewable technologies. I talked to them about innovation that is uniquely supported in Nova Scotia by industry, by our university sector, by individuals, and of course, government action. Action and a passion that demonstrates our commitment to the future in terms of the environment, our economy, and ultimately competitive, affordable, renewable energy. An action that is found in innovation rather than the status quo. As tidal energy industry leaders and as marine renewable industry leaders, I hope you appreciate that I am fully committed to advancing the marine renewable energy industry in Nova Scotia and not just in Nova Scotia, but around the globe. My commitment and interest in marine renewables is not new. He already mentioned that uh, a number of years ago, uh, back in 1991, I did a study uh, as a science fair project that got me a scholarship into my science degree at Dell, and that was on the environmental effects of tidal barrages in the Bay of Fundy. So I know the background well, and if anybody's really interested, apparently Bruce Cameron brought my science fair report with him. He's got it at the hotel. <laughs> Keep in mind that was in the days of dot matrix printers and, and all those kind of graphs. So, uh, but it was, it was something I had done at the time in conjunction with the Technical University of Nova Scotia, TUNS, which later became Daltech and now is the Dell School of Engineering. But it was really interesting to look at that because, of course, that was at the time that we were shortly after the Annapolis Basin uh, uh, tidal barrage and looking at that and what the other options would be. And at that time, some of you may remember, in fact, that we were, we were talking about even the possibility of putting a barrage right the way across the Bay of Fundy with a, a causeway. Everybody figured that was going to be the solution. You can get rid of the Digby Ferry and have a causeway right across from uh, uh, St. John to Digby across this tidal barrage. That, that was everybody's solution. Uh, nobody bothered to ask the whales what they thought at the time, but they, you know, we've, we've come a long way from there. Ideas have progressed in terms of how we harness tidal power. But the advancement of tidal energy is a constant, and developing renewable energy technologies really is the only option for the future at this point. Now, those around me in the Department of Energy have learned over the past six weeks that I don't believe in the word impossible. I want to know how things will happen. And that applies directly to tidal power and marine renewables. I want us as Nova Scotians and as Canada to be a champion for an industry and also a global collaborator. And I'm not the only one. Our Premier Stephen McNeil actually sits in a riding uh, just, next to, just next door to the Fundy Tidal Comfit Project. 
and he has a personal interest in that unique project and the industry in general. Now, most of the countries and people here at the conference today share Nova Scotia's connection to the sea. American poet Sarah Kay said something that I think sums up why tidal energy in particular has a lot of potential for all of us. She said, there's nothing more beautiful than the way the ocean refuses to stop kissing the shoreline no matter how many times it's sent away. And unlike many other renewables, which obviously have a place in our energy mix, the patterns of the tides are always there on an exacting pattern of the cycles of the moon, which means that although it's intermittent, it's predictable. And that makes it much more important in terms of the, the mix of, of renewables. And the energy in tides is something that we can always count on, almost beyond anything else. And I want, to I want you to think for a second, you look at this picture uh, that Chris Hatfield recently took from space. And one of the defining characteristics of many of the photos that he shot from space are the oceans. The oceans, this is another one that he took, the ocean is the world's single most defining physical feature. And for those of us who live near the sea, we recognize it as the most significant economic feature as well. And so they promised me this pointer works. For those of you who don't know where this one is, this is Nova Scotia. This is uh, Digby Neck. And recently, the COMFIT programs that I'm going to talk about a little bit later have been approved right in around this area in the Digby Gut. And so looking from space, you know, Chris Hatfield just a few months ago could even show you the potential. And of course, as we get down here towards Minus Basin and so forth. So it's fitting that in Nova Scotia, we see our experience and strength in ocean industries and ocean technology as the foundation for a strategy and title. In fact, the ocean technology sector will represent a significant portion of our new workplace development strategy that we will be launching in the coming months. One of the key strengths is our skilled workforce. We are home to some of the best marine researchers in the world. A few of them are here today, and it was a very large contingent from Acadia University. At Bedford Institute of Oceanography, we have one of the largest concentrations of marine researchers in the world. We are home to North America's highest concentration of ocean technology companies. And many of them work all over the world. And many of them work all over the world without people in Nova Scotia, and Scotia even knowing they exist. We are, connected, we are trying to connect them to global partners. We are helping them transfer their knowledge in defense and oceanography, remote sensing, resource assessment, and we are encouraging them to invest in the tidal future where they learn that lessons that can be sold globally are even transferred back to their current business. Now, these are just some of the recent developments in Nova Scotia where we have taken a direct financial stake in the tidal development industry. As someone in the industry said to me in the UK last week, they said, Nova Scotia has skin in the game. And our plan is for that to continue. We are in the process of updating our strategic environmental assessment of the Bay of Fundy to explore how commercial development of the industry will impact the region on a social level as well as economically and environmentally. We have also been implementing a collaborative tidal energy resource assessment in Shelburne, Yarmouth, and Digby counties and involving a strong team of industry and academic experts from Dalhousie and Acadia Universities, the Nova Scotia Community College and Fundy Title. Many of those people are here today. And those projects will help address some of the major challenges and opportunities presented in Canada's Marine Renewable Energy Technology Roadmap. It's about finding solutions, not putting up roadblocks. And our requirements for testing and innovation have led Fundy Tidal in new directions and partnerships. And their exciting news for two, uh, 2014 is their plan to test and demonstrate a clean current tur tidal turbine. And of course, some of you would know today, uh, would have noticed the announcement today from Force and uh, Nortec of the new technology of the real-time measurement of turbulent water flow in the turbine hub height. And of course, we're very proud of our role in helping establish Force, the Fundy Ocean Research Center and Energy. And as you know, federal funding and industry commitment has resulted in this becoming Canada's flagship for marine renewables. And in fact, uh, I mentioned I was in the UK the other week, and at some of the meetings I had there with the UK Department of Energy and Climate Change, they talked about the idea of developing all new turbines to what they called the force standard. The force standard. 
a standard based on if it works in the Bay of Fundy, it will work anywhere in the world. Now, FORCE has an important role to play in technology demonstration and will lead investment attraction once the subsea cable has been installed. Uh, as an update, and some of you in here will already know this, they've just completed several dry runs of installing the sub submarine cable in preparation of installation. It's a powerful cable that would take 34,500 volts carrying 16 megawatts, but because they're dividing that into four, it allows total capacity of 64 megawatts or enough to power about 20,000 homes at peak energy flow. The installation will be completed by IT International Telecom, which is a Nova Scotia company who's already doing work around the world and yet isn't a household name here at home. And we look forward to continuing the work to help bring force to the next research or their research to the next level. And the next round of RFPs for births at force close on December 16th. And already, even here and, and around the world, as I've talked to different people, that's drawing significant interest. We're also proud that recently our Utility and Review Board in Nova Scotia has established the new feed-in tariff for tidal projects and development projects. And that gives the industry clarity on the established price per megawatt for tidal energy production. And I'm looking forward to personally approving 15 to 20 megawatts of tidal energy at the rate set by the board. And this will give us real experience in deployment and operation real experience that will allow future developments to proceed at a lower cost and improved economics. I've heard a lot of people talk about regulations. And in talking to you, I realized that a regulatory environment is extremely important and that that certainty is needed. And so I'm pleased to be able to tell you that in the coming weeks, I will be announcing the new regulatory regime for tidal energy in Nova Scotia. I've made this a priority in the department, and we will be bringing it to Cabinet very soon, and hopefully before Christmas, we will have a Christmas present for the industry to very clearly establish what the regulations will be. We are also working towards in the introduction of specific legislation to support tidal and other marine renewables that will outline a clear path to move from demonstration projects to commercial development. And this legislation will also give the public the assurance they need that any activity in our oceans will happen responsibly. So I mentioned the, the COMFIT program. On a smaller scale, we're already moving ahead. We think the market experience at scales that are both large and small is significant and can be shared. But we don't intend to start from scratch. We are building on the strengths of others and building on the collaboration of others around the world. And to that end, each government in the world that I've spoken to about this has an interest in greener energy at affordable rates for their citizens. And in Nova Scotia, our in interest in tidal energy is also, about mo is also motivated about capitalizing on the province's marine energy industry and the research experience. Working together, we can, sh we can share information, we can develop greater efficiencies, faster development, and quicker technological advances than we can do alone. Nova Scotia, and I know Canada as well, want to grow our industry and help establish more collaboration at a global level. When I met last week, I've, I've referenced being in the UK a few times in uh, last week, and one of the things that I did, I, I was over there for a wedding, and of all things, and I said to the staff, I said, you know, I'm going to be over there, Let's see if we can set a meeting up with them to talk about some of the tidal work they're doing and find out what they're doing. And they were pleased to welcome me there and discuss the idea about how do we work together. And they started naming some of the partners in the countries that they, and Nova Scotia and so forth that they would like to get together to start harmonizing regulations to talk about how we can have similar standards and how we can bring the development costs down for tidal the tidal industry and marine, marine renewables in general. And I'm looking forward to continuing that positive relationship and expanding it as we work towards the IOCE conference in Halifax next year. Now, we already have a positive working relationship with the UK, but it's one that we can grow. And some of that international collaboration also includes things like uh, Acadia's Tidal Toolkit, which is usable worldwide and certainly has elements that are specific to Nova Scotia, but is something that can be learned 
uh, that countries around the world can learn from and that we can all benefit from. So we are also actively pursuing opportunities with international markets in Asia and Europe. In fact, Bruce Cameron just came back from Singapore. Engaging international research interests is important to us and a key opportunity to share and commercialize our title experience. We also expect collaborations resulting in more partnerships in Southeast Asia and Scotland. And we will be doing more with the United States and others in the Americas. Our full commitment to the international agenda will be on display next year when we host the International Conference on Ocean Energy, and I hope you'll all attend. Because it will bring together industry, academia, and governments from around the world, and it will be a turning point. And I'm hopeful that by the time we reach that point, we will be able to have measurable success on developing international partnerships in this area. It will be a priority for me over the next year to be able to stand in Halifax and say that we have reached a point where we have very strong bonds between other countries and industry players and universities around the world and that we are all working towards the same goal of marine renewables and tidal energy being a major part of the world's renewable energy mix. And I'm committed to a respons the responsible development of marine renewables as a continuation of Nova Scotia's close association with the sea. So all of you here today are in the business of turning the ocean into a source of power. And I, I sat in on the previous, uh, part of the previous seminar, and there's all different kinds of technologies. There's different ways, there's small, there's large, but they're all part of that mix. And so we can have a thriving commercial industry worldwide, an industry with robust technology, an industry that champions innovation, an industry that harnesses the experience and expertise in our academic sector, and one that is safe, clean, reliable, and affordable. Nova Scotia's world-class research community and the strength of our resource and our coming regulatory landscape make us a compelling partner. Now, we're in a marathon, not a sprint, in this industry, and you all know that here today because you've all made a commitment to it. But I'll leave you with this. In Nova Scotia, we're keen, we're optimistic about the future, and we are very excited to work with you to create a vibrant and innovative tidal, en tidal energy industry and mar marine renewable industry. Thank you very much.